Here's what I think is the most effective chest workout I've ever designed, according to the most up-to-date scientific research. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here today, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching, taking you through the best chest workout I can possibly make. What makes for a good workout? First, any given training session only exists within the context of your whole program. This session I'm about to take you through exists within the context of you having two to three chest workouts in a given week that are roughly similar to what I'm about to give you. Next, with any effective workout, we want to make sure we limit redundancy. That is to say, we don't do the same thing over and over again. For instance, each additional set we perform for a given muscle group in a single training session has diminishing returns. So on a set per set basis, the first set you do for a given muscle group is going to be the most effective. This general principle of diminishing returns and therefore why you'd want to limit redundancy in a session was evidenced in an in-house meta-analysis performed by James Krieger. So we don't want to be doing a ton of sets or a ton of exercises for the exact same muscle groups in the same movement pattern at the expense of targeting other muscles a little bit better. For instance, doing a flat wide grip bench press, followed by a flat close grip bench press, followed by a flat dumbbell press, is a pretty poor use of your time and fatigue when you consider that you could just have done a flat pressing variation, followed by an incline pressing variation, and gotten better hypertrophy overall. So if a given workout has a ton of the same exercise done over and over again, with minimal difference between each exercise, that's a bad sign. Next, we want to make sure we pick maximally effective rep ranges for muscle growth. For muscle growth, provided you take a set sufficiently close to failure, a repetition range of anywhere between 5 reps per set and 50 reps per set is going to be equally effective. However, there are some practical limitations to going with super high rep work. Specifically, it's miserable, it's a lot of pain, and most people become far less accurate once they go much past 12 to 15 reps per set. For that reason, most of our training will take place in the 5 to 15 rep range. However, there might be a slight benefit to including a variety of rep ranges within your training. So not just training heavy or just training light, but using a combination of different rep ranges. Next, we'll want to make sure that we're using the amount of sets that will maximize muscle growth in the context of your routine. So making sure that if we do a similar session two to three times in a given week, that overall adds up to a very effective weekly volume. For a really solid starting spot, your two to three weekly sessions should lead to about 10 to 20 sets for each muscle group that you're trying to grow. However, some more recent evidence suggests that even going all the way up to say 20 to 40 sets per week per muscle group might further increase hypertrophy. And so for this session, we'll be aiming to hit most muscle groups with between five and 15 sets per muscle, depending on how much you're focusing on your chest specifically, how much volume you can recover from and more. Next, we'll want to make sure we're going sufficiently close to failure on each set to maximize muscle growth. A meta regression by Robinson and colleagues showed that as you take a set closer to failure, the muscle growth you get from that set also increases. However, because you do see additional fatigue from going closer to failure, it may be a good idea to go a little bit further from failure earlier in a session and a little bit closer to failure later in that session so that overall you're still maintaining a good amount of performance throughout the session and not getting gassed out or too fatigued too early in the session. And so generally for exercises you're performing earlier in the session and on earlier sets within an exercise, we'll stay a little bit further from failure and gradually inch closer to failure with each additional set and each exercise. Next, a huge part Part of a good workout is picking the most effective exercises for different muscle groups you're trying to target. I have a whole series on this exact topic and there's a video for the chest somewhere up here, but here's a quick breakdown of what I look for in a good muscle growth exercise. First, the exercise should be sufficiently stable that the target muscle group is the limiting factor. We want to be targeting one of the functions of the muscle group we're trying to target. It's important that the target muscle is the limiting factor and the reason why you have to end a set. The exercise we pick for muscle growth should likely also be stressed friendly and that can be broken down into one getting a good stretch on the target muscle group in the exercise 
two, having plenty of tension in that stretch position, and three, the exercise we pick being length and partial friendly. So if you want to increase the emphasis on that stretch position, you can do so safely. Wherever possible, we also want to minimize the involvement of other non-target muscle groups. So if, for example, we can sit down or lie down as opposed to standing up, that might reduce the involvement of non-target muscle groups. And finally, if you're someone who's time constrained, Picking exercises that are more time efficient, like for example, a dumbbell or a stack loaded machine exercise over something like a barbell exercise can save you time and allow you to get more effective training in in whatever time you have to work out. Next up, we'll want to make sure we're resting sufficiently long between sets to maximize muscle growth. What this means is that we generally want to rest for at least 60 seconds between sets of a given exercise. For more compound exercises, like for example, a barbell bench press or an incline dumbbell press, we may want to rest closer to two to three minutes. A good rule of thumb is if you feel like you can perform another set that is similar in performance to your last set and you're really pushing yourself hard enough, it's a good sign that you've rested for long enough. With that being said, you can make up for shorter rest times by just doing more sets and you will likely see the same hypertrophy according to a study by long going colleagues in 2022. While exercise order, or essentially the order in which you do different exercises in your workout, is likely not that important for muscle growth, there might be a couple things we want to pay attention to. Specifically, we generally want to start your workouts with whatever exercises or muscle groups you're trying to specialize on or emphasize the most. Secondly, we want to order exercises in a way that maximizes performance across the whole session ideally. For example, if starting with a dumbbell fly really impacts your performance on the bench press afterwards, but starting with a bench press doesn't really impact your performance on the dumbbell fly afterwards, there's a chance that you'd be better off starting with a barbell bench press followed by the dumbbell fly. A good rule of thumb if you don't want to worry about any of this is to generally start with the more compound exercises and then gradually move on to the more isolation type exercises. But again, exercise order probably doesn't play a big role. And the final big component of a really effective workout is good technique on all exercises. And in fact, I was recently involved in a review paper that looked at exactly this topic. Good technique for muscle growth right now can be broken down into three things. First, the range of motion that you use needs to focus on the stretch at least a little bit. At the very least, use a full range of motion, which incorporates that fully lengthened stretch position, or you can emphasize it further by just doing the lengthened half of the repetition. And that's what we call lengthened partials. The second part of good technique is having a repetition duration of at least around two seconds with some control in the eccentric phase of a movement. And the final component of good technique is to minimize the involvement of non-target muscle groups. So that is what makes a good, effective chest workout. Without further ado, let me give you what I think is a super effective science-based chest workout. First off, we'll be starting the session with some sort of incline press. If an incline dumbbell press allows you to get a full stretch on your chest, like you couldn't possibly get more of a stretch, the incline dumbbell press is a great option, time efficient, and a great movement to start a session with. You'll be doing three to five sets of five to 10 repetitions, with the first set being around three reps in reserve, gradually inching closer and closer to one repetition in the tank by the last set. If you're specializing in your upper chest, or if you're only training your chest, say twice a week, feel free to do closer to five sets or closer to three sets if you're not specializing or if you're training your chest more frequently. The incline dumbbell press targets the upper chest and the lower chest through transverse flexion of the shoulder and flexion of the shoulder. Why are we starting the session with an incline press? Well, a recent study by Chavez and colleagues actually found greater upper chest hypertrophy with an incline press at 45 degrees on the Smith machine compared to a flat Smith machine bench press, but similar lower chest hypertrophy. So as far as overall hypertrophy goes, an incline press might actually be slightly better. For that same reason, we'll be using a 45 degree incline to target the upper chest. Between sets on the incline dumbbell press, take two to three minutes of rest or however long is required for you to get a good performance from set to set. Importantly, the incline dumbbell press is stretch friendly. You can easily do partials on this exercise and just drop the dumbbells if you can't get another one. For a lot of people, you can get a full stretch on the upper chest. However, what if you can't? Or what if you just don't have sufficiently heavy dumbbells? Well, here are a couple other good options. The first, if you have access to it, is the Prime Incline Chest Press. This machine allows you to selectively load the length in position and usually allows most people to get a full stretch on their chest as well. If you don't have this, try a deficit decline push-up. 
This mimics the positioning of an inclined dumbbell press and allows you to get a full stretch on your upper chest. It's just potentially a little bit less stable or involves more other muscle groups than an inclined dumbbell press. After our upper chest focused exercise, we now have to hit a lower chest. And for the lower chest, we'll be doing the deficit push-up. The deficit push-up primarily targets transverse flexion of the shoulder and therefore targets the lower chest quite effectively. We'll be doing three to five sets of 10 to 20 reps or more if you're too strong for that rep range. Taking the first set to about two reps shy of failure and gradually inching closer to failure with the last set being taken to failure. Generally, the push-up will be more appropriate for higher reps. Most people don't have the means to sufficiently load the push-up to make it work in a much heavier rep range within about 10 to 20. Because of the deficit you're using, you're able to fully lengthen the lower chest, which makes it very stretch friendly. And if you wanted to further increase the emphasis on the stretch position, you could easily do length and partial safely. Just as for the income dumbbell press, try resting for two to three minutes between sets or however long is required for you to maintain a good performance set to set. If for some reason you can't or you don't want to do deficit push-ups, try the flat dumbbell press instead. Many of the same benefits of the incline dumbbell press for the upper chest apply to the flat dumbbell press for lower chest. Alternatively, if you have it, the prime machine for flat chest pressing can be great too. And finally, if you want to do further volume for your chest, or for example, if you're only training your chest twice a week, you can get in an optional third chest exercise. For this optional third chest exercise, I would include an isolation exercise that we can perform for higher repetitions as a means to get a variety of rep ranges in within the same session. The exercise I recommend is the dumbbell fly. I think the dumbbell fly is the ultimate chest stretcher and is therefore likely a good choice for muscle growth. The dumbbell fly targets shoulder transverse flexion, allowing you to target both the upper and lower pec effectively. Alternatively, if dumbbell flies give you trouble as far as your shoulders go or something like that, try the machine fly instead. Just as for the other movements mentioned in this video, you can feel free to cut out the top portion of the movement to further increase the emphasis on the stretch. Because this is an isolation movement, you may be able to get away with shorter rest times, maybe closer to one and a half to two minutes between sets. But once again, pay attention to performance. Take the first set of this exercise to about one rep shy of failure, and then gradually inch closer and closer to failure taking the last set or two to failure. Following on from the optional dumbbell fly or machine fly, you can include any tricep front delt work you want. Let's go through the checklist of what makes a good session together and see whether or not this session passes the test. First, by including a flat pressing, an incline pressing variation, and potentially a fly, we've targeted the majority of the functions of the chest. We've used different exercises and different movement patterns and we've used different rep ranges, therefore limiting redundancy within the session. This makes sure we're getting your upper chest, your lower chest, both a good stimulus. We've also included a variety of rep ranges to potentially get a slight boost in muscle growth. Next up, as far as volume goes, you're getting about six to 14 sets for your chest in the session in some regard. So if you repeat this twice or three times a week, that takes you from about 12 weekly sets all the way up to potentially 42 weekly sets, depending on how much of an emphasis you're placing on your chest in your routine. We've also made sure to train sufficiently close to failure throughout the session to maximize hypertrophy, going further from failure earlier in the session, and then gradually going closer to failure as we reach the end of the session to mitigate any negative impact of the fatigue from going too close to failure on the session overall. By taking somewhere between 90 seconds of rest and three minutes of rest between each set on each exercise, depending on the rep range involved, depending on the exercise involved, we are likely maximizing hypertrophy. Next, while exercise order likely doesn't play much, if any, role, we have tried to prioritize movements that are best for hypertrophy, putting the incline press first in the session as potentially the most effective chest exercise of the session, and then gradually having you move from more compound exercises to more isolation type exercises. And finally, on all exercises, we're hitting the three major components of good technique, a focus on the stretch, a sufficiently controlled tempo, and minimizing involvement of non-target muscle groups. That is the smartest chest workout I can come up with for muscle building according to the science at this point in 2024. If you enjoyed the video, leave a comment down below letting me know if you think this is a good workout. If you think it's terrible, let me know too. If you want to see me break down the best possible workout for any other muscle group, leave a comment down below and I'll get to it. If you'd like me to coach you, consider taking a look at the link above to see what I offer. With that being said, have a great day, try this chest workout, get swole, and I'll see you guys, my subscribers, in that next one. Peace.